I agree. I definitely agree. Um, you know, a lot of us veterans um, that came together, we, we created the, the Paladin Roundtable Network. And the whole idea mm -hmm. of the network is we're trying to bring the left, the right back to the center. Yes. And that's the only way that we can unite this country. Yes. Uh, so we don't become another uh, statistic in mm -hmm. the history of those civilizations that have risen and fallen. Right. Uh, we're, 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 we're trying to make a difference on that level. So, um, so the next question uh, was something real quick, if you don't mind, Sean, Go ahead. I had, I had to file to um, run for us Senate and I had more Democrats sign for me to file than I did Republicans because they were terrified of me turning in their name and address to the federal government because of what they've done to the J six people. And that tells me a huge thing that tells me that all three branches of government have been weaponized against the American people. Mm -hmm. And the Democrats are seeing that and they signed for me because they know that despite me um, know, that knowing that I would vote for President Trump, I've actually endorsed him before he could endorse me. They need to know that I have their back that I love unconditionally and our children and our vets are number one and we America first agenda 47. And I will say it until I'm blue in the face. I will not turn my back on the American people. We are, we're in a red sea moment. We have got the right and the left and I consider it the waves of the ocean. And we are going to walk through that sand of the Red Sea and we're going to go on the other side and we're going to declare victory because we are binding together as one people, not one party where the titles have got to be lost. We're fighting a battle against good and evil. I'm sorry. I, I didn't to interrupt. So <laughs> makes me so upset. I definitely, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that just, um, they're tired of all this extreme, Yeah, you know, whether it's left or whether it's right they just bad on both sides. Yeah, they want to get back to normal. Want to get back to, you know, what we used to be, where everybody was, you know, working together. Um, you know, it's caring. Get better. Us. It's not going to get back to normal. I people need to understand. There's almost 200 people serving in this in the in the not the Supreme Court, in the Senate and Congress that have not sworn an oath to office. That means they are illegally in office. And they're passing bills that they have no legal right to pass. And they might have sworn an oath on a Bible. But if that sucker doesn't get filed in the county or the state, it's not legal. And people, uh, I have a list. I have to get it from Ann Vanderstill. She's doing an update on it. But so many that are in there are in there illegally. And I believe Kamala Harris is, is on that list. These people have not sworn an oath to defend our constitution and our co country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I did years ago when I became mayor and I didn't even like politics then any more than I do now, but I like justice and I like integrity and I like honesty. And I like, I would be the first to tell you if I made a stupid mistake because I'm human, I would say it first and I would ask for forgiveness because if you're not humble and you're not willing to serve the people as a servant, you can't do that. You have to be humble. And I am humble. It doesn't mean I'm weak. It means I'm strong because I'm not afraid to say the truth. Right. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. We need a lot more humility in this world. Um, yes. For sure. You know, um, so the next question, uh, I, I've got a brain fart today for some reason, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> must be the old age thing i don't know i'm old too you would be surprised i'm getting close to 60 um, i i just turned 50 last year so oh you're uh, a baby <laughs> <laughs> well thank you <laughs> um so what are your thoughts about uh northern california uh separating from the rest of the state there's been some talk about that what are your thoughts i've actually been to some of those meetings you know, the one, the biggest point that I think is so important is that they keep changing the sphere of influence, which means that they're keep changing the voting lines. So first they've burned everybody out of their area to go into more um, uh, 
um, cities into the cities and it's more condensed. And then they change the lines of voting um, lines so that the people that are voting are mostly liberal. And then you hardly have anybody in the rural areas because all their homes were burned. And then when I was in Santa Cruz, they had an area burned there and they can't even get a permit to build because they wanted to build, I don't know, something ridiculous, like a six foot um, foundation so that it's safe and just, just so much garbage. They're just full of crap and it's time to apply some common sense. But what the reason that it makes sense to separate that to like have a North Carolina and a South Carolina is because of the boundary lines that they've changed and it's not, it's underrepresented because of the um, areas are so huge. And if we had better representation by separating the state, it would actually be a lot more fair and competitive. That way we could have 20 something percent percent or 22 electoral votes for president Trump or the president that we chose and they didn't select because it's more, um, re it's red, it's more conservative areas. You know, I, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I agree 100%. You know, um, like I live in Illinois, right? Mm -hmm. And somehow they're out of 103 counties, there's four counties, they're all blue. The rest of them are all red, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there's been kind of this meme going around for the last, I don't know, five, six years where people are saying, why don't we just take uh, build a wall around Chicago and Chicago <laughs> will become a state of their own and just leave the rest of Illinois alone. And I'm oh, like, man, hey, that just brought me a brain. I just thought of this great big World War Three in the middle of these walls and these all blown up. <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> There, there's some logistics, though, that I learned when I was the mayor that, about separating the state. And there are things that um, I don't think that we have time to tackle now. We need to get our sovereign team back and close our borders. And yeah. what what that is, <laughs> excuse me, is that the lines for pg e actually go from Oregon all the way down through the state of California, which is 700 miles long. We're 250 miles wide. I believe that we need to have competition in the market. I don't think there should only be one electric company. I think that they should be able to compete so we can choose our own electric company as is phone services, medical insurance across the board. Uh, the other thing is, is that our, our water, our water comes from the mountains and the mountains come from Northern California and they, they flow into Shasta Lake and Lake Oroville and from those, they go to the Delta and Feather River and they go further south. If we separated the state, we would end up with a real big problem as far as who has what and breaking off that water line. A lot of our water is wasted into the ocean. We need to rebuild the infrastructure of Shasta Dam and Oroville Dam. One of my concerns with all of these people crossing the border that aren't coming here for, for asylum, I'm not saying that, that they all are. I think right. some have been brought here against their will to be used as payment to cross the border and uh, the innocent ones. And I really am concerned about the safety of those two dams. If those two dams were taken out, it would cripple California and, cri and California is one of the largest producers of food, food, not just for the United States, but for Japan. We grow more rice in our area than Japan can themselves because the landmass, they don't have enough um, land available to do that. And California is one of the main producers of milk and cheese and a lot of the grains and nuts and fruit. And we actually, our nation supports 190 other nations. And if we fall, they starve. And people do not realize the vast problem that it, it, that's been created. And then the Chinese Communist Party building the bridge at the Darien Gap and then the Panama Canal being drained, and then all of our cargo ships that are going to have to go around South America to bring in goods. We need to be so sovereign that we build that we have our own medications in our state and in our um, nation. We need to have our own oil. People should be buying from us. We have the most rich, vibrant nation in the world, and we need to be utilizing that all of these people that are for um, saving bugs that you can't even see unless you have a microscope. Um, what, where, what happened to humanity? What happened to um, caring more about children and babies than you do about your pet? Uh, it's just so messed up. But that's some of the problems that we would have with dividing California. 
that's a huge, huge undertaking. And, um, those logistics that are very important, the water, um, especially because we have farmland from Bakersfield, California, all the way up to Redding, California, that's something that we would have to, to figure out first, which is a kind of a logistical nightmare. And wow. the snowfall that melts goes into the two top dams that are at the top of California. Wow. Yeah. It's, um, you know, uh, I guess my, my veteran brain is kind of was um, thinking about what you were talking about. All these illegal immigrants that are coming into this country, right? And we have noticed that there's uh, military-aged men that have embedded themselves into uh, a large middle uh, portion of these people coming up. Um, one of the things that we discovered was uh, Joe Biden and his administration created an app that's called the CBP-1 yeah. app. And it's being funded by uh, United Nations. Mm -hmm. And so United Nations is funding the illegal illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. So when they, they're told to go, when they fill out the app, and then it tells them exactly where to go, and they go yeah. to these locations, they get, uh, you know, airplane tickets. Backpacks. Free, right. Mm -hmm. Or they, they get a ride on a ship and they go to Ecuador. And yeah. then from Ecuador, I mean, it, it really just, it's uh it's a very uh, sophisticated. It's a military strategic plan to take out the United States. Yes. It's their insurgents, as far as I'm concerned. Military you know, I, combatants. I, I honestly, mm, I I have a lot of thoughts about that. I probably shouldn't say it on here. Uh, I think, um, you know, yeah, we, you know, a lot of us veterans are, are, um, you know, we're trying to wrap our head around how is our how is it that our own government is complicit in the crime and and why you know what mechanisms do we have to be able to hold them accountable for the treasonous acts? You know, and it's just been it's been really frustrating. But I think that um, you know we're going to have to just uh, learn to work together on on these mm -hmm. issues and. Um, you know, staying strapped and staying prepared and uh, getting knowing your neighbors, you know, get to know your neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, it's just. Uh, People, have to, they have to vote, Sean. Um, we found out today that there's some irregularities, which big surprise. Um, they're going to be playing their game any way they can since they know we're watching. But geo um, fencing would be something I would encourage but yeah. the people have got to vote so much like they did with Hillary that they flood the system. So there's no way in on God's green earth that they can figure out how to make up those extra votes because the paper won't be available because we've outvoted them. I honestly believe California was red in 2020. I'm not an election denier, but the people in Congress and the Senate and Mike Pence betrayed our country because they didn't even allow time for us to question it. The fact mm -hmm. that they said that we couldn't question it and they turned something, a protest into an insurrection and Nancy Pelosi should be held for treason for what she did for not allowing the national guard to come in the three letter in agencies that allowed this supposed um, bomb or whatever it was to be outside the Republican um, building. It's just, it's so obvious. And then when Adam Schiff is on the January 6th committee and he has the nerve to come out and lie um, habitually to the American people, he's he's committed treason, not only against his oath of office, but his oath as an attorney. And he okay. they destroyed documents, public documents that were ours. That should be a crime of a century. I do not <laughs> believe they shouldn't be held accountable. Yeah. We have got to have people in office that are a vote for President Trump because Agenda 47 addresses a lot of these issues we're talking about. And he yeah. needs that vote in the U.S. Senate to get it passed so that people that can be tried for treason, that it's a death penalty if you're caught trafficking. It, these people yeah. that are so depraved, um, if if they want to come to Jesus, they're gonna, they might have to do it on a wall. And... Um, before the gun goes off, because I have no empathy for people that hurt the innocent. They have no one else to defend them but us. Right. Exactly. You know, a lot of us veterans, we feel the same way too. 
and I'm sure a lot of my viewers here today uh, wholeheartedly agree with that. You know, uh, <clears throat> since the, you know, uh, the big one of the big issues that uh, we're struggling with, I think a lot of people are struggling with, but I think with social media, with the help of social media, mm -hmm. uh, we're bringing about to the awareness to the forefront of mm -hmm. child sex trafficking. And, you know, um, there's a lot of wonderful people out there. There's a lot of independent uh, uh, groups of people that are going after these child sex traffickers. Um, and this so prevalent today. I mean, uh, if, if you would have asked me 15 years ago if I even knew this was a, a thing, if it even existed, I, I probably would have said, I have no idea. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I remember watching a, in, an interview with a cartel, an ex cartel member, where he said that uh, child sex trafficking is the most profitable business uh, in the world today is three times mm -hmm. over than the, the, the sale of the drugs because um you know they it's not something that they just use once and discard it nice. uh, they can you know constantly over abuse these children yeah we just we rescued some children this summer and um, and i i can't take say it, it it's our church but we did notify um, some military and uh, that we had a hot tip that there was a young man in prison that let us know that he had been sodomized on this barge in San Francisco Harbor. And people were always like, well, how does that happen? And the media didn't say anything. The media needs to be held to account too for yeah. lying to the American people. The producers need to be held to account like Paul Ryan and the others that own these places because they have lied, manipulated the American people into fearing for their lives and they haven't spoken the truth, but we gave this tip to some military um, and the military actually acted on that. And people don't realize when you have a ship out in um, a bay or an ocean, it could be in international waters where it can't be touched. And the, the local law enforcement wouldn't have any jurisdiction. I mean, it's sad, but the law enforcement has to follow the rules, but the bad guys don't have to follow any, any, and they can just sit out there and do their little thing. But they did a hit. They went out there and they stormed that barge. That this young man told us that he had been sodomized on. He was in prison. He was sobbing. No young man would want to say that out loud. And they raided that ship and saved 108 children. And wow. there were dead children on that ship too, but you heard nothing about it in the news. This is in California in the San Francisco Bay. And there were dead children on there, but each one of those children had a written Sharpie note on them. They were going to be used for their organs. They were going to be used for sex trafficking, or they were going to be used as slaves. And to all the black people and all the Asian people and anyone that has been used as a slave, where's your voice? Why aren't you standing up? And the children that had these things written on them, it's not only horrific, it's demonic. And as a Christian mother and knowing the authority that I have and my God and your God, the one that created us and Jesus who died for us, I stand on the, the authority and I rebuke it and I break it because the state of California is one of the largest trafficking states in the nation. We have three of the largest um, places, the C the, um, the, oh, the foster care system, 60% of the children go missing from there and they never come back. And they, 400,000 children go missing in the United States alone. The United States is the largest trafficking nation in the entire world. And it's because we have so many ports and so many um, avenues but California in particular has I-5 and 99 that goes clear straight, right straight down through the entire state. And we have got to put a stop to it. Our church actually just put a bid down on an old prison that's not on gov government property. And we want to turn it into a paradise for trafficked children to have people come in that, that have homeopathic um, means to heal these babies and people to come in and love them and help put the pieces back together of these shattered little lives. And I am so thankful that our church is proactive and we fight for the innocent. And I am, that's, I'm so excited. This is just like 15 minutes from where I'm sitting that we're going to be doing this. And we have people actually already starting to fly into California with the hope that we can save the innocent. And 
We were told by the military that do these things that they could fill this place up five times over and wow. it holds 1000. Wow. That's, that's wow. unbelievable. You know, it's, it's, it's to me, uh, you know, it's a kiss home very closely with, uh, this whole situation. And, uh, I am so glad to see so many people standing up. I mean, actually doing something, to, you know, being a part mm -hmm. of something greater than themselves. And I think yeah. that uh, we need more people to do this. Um, not yeah. not just the folks that are, you know, wanting to run for Senate, but I mean, just ordinary yeah. everyday folks just, you know, get involved in this. Um, now, if somebody in California wants to, you know, get involved with this, how, how would they, how would they go about this? They can either email me and then I can pass the information along. We're right now in escrow with this um, this project, which is monumental for the state of California. It will we even have legal um, eagles that are taking care of the fact that that the um, child protective services will have no right to come on the property either because they're not all of them are that them are bad. And I, I can't say that's one thing we all need to be really cautious of. People say terrible things about California and there's so many thousands and thousands of people that are just amazing, God fearing people that love people. And them just saying our whole entire state sucks is not true. We have a horrible government system and we are trying to rise above it and break the fraudulent selection code that they're doing. And we need to stand up and vote them out and the only way, if you think your vote doesn't matter, if you just keep voting and voting and voting, um, just as, as a group, as your whole, your whole family, 50% of the church doesn't vote. And I just say to the church, you need to wake up. You're supposed to be the salt of the earth. And if you're not doing your job, I don't think you're a Christian. I don't think that you're standing up for your nation. Being passive is not what God did. He went out and he reached the people. He went out and looked for the brokenhearted and, as a voice for the state of California, as a mother of a vet, as a mother of veterans that I call my boys, I stand up for you and I am not afraid. I'm not afraid to take a bullet and I'm not afraid to send one because we have an obligation to hold the front line and I'm not going to cause an insurrection or anything in case any person on here is liberal and freaks out but we need to protect our family. We have that right under the constitution and we need to stand up and email me, email me at uh, charlita at charlitabassett.com. And it should be on my website, my email address, but get a message to us and anybody that wants to participate and helps helping save these children. I mean, mm -hmm. veterans, we have a lot of veterans that have a heart for the kids because they know what's going on. They've seen it on the outside. And yeah. just like my boys, they have seen the worst things and it's coming to the United States and we've got to stand up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. You know, one of the big things is that, um, you know, <clears throat> we need to stop everything coming in uh, from the yeah. border. Right. Yes, you know, um, so, you know, so that that's the question is, would you, if you were in the U S Senate uh, right now, um, would you be writing a bill to have uh, repurposed the border patrol, so to speak, uh, and just have a national guards protecting the borders? Or would you uh, empower the states to um, take control of their national guard to protect the borders and the, the federal government fund it? Or how? Yeah. What so where we're at right now, because we have such a liberal liberal governors at, at a lot of the border states, I don't think that would be viable. I think we need to shut it down. I think that we, at the regular border crossings, people that actually have to come to the United States that have green cards that legally can come in and work is one thing. But I think we need to shut down any access to the border. And I honestly, personally, just as a mom, I believe we need trained military at our borders. We yeah. need to be like other nations to defend our sovereignty. And until the walls are built and a lot of places can't have walls because of topography is it's impossible. Things need to be implemented in the water to make sure they can never cross. 
And I don't mean that in a hateful way. There are legal ways to come. I have friends that have been on the waiting list to become citizens for years, and they've been put to the bottom of the pile because of their paper load is too high. They won't come out and say it's because so many thousands and thousands of people have come from other countries that got the front line. But some of these people, they need to go rescue their family in South Africa and different places. And they've paid their money. They've The government's taken their money, but they won't let them take that final step to become a citizen. And yet they're giving it out for free at the border. And okay. it's wrong. And I honestly, as a U.S. Senator, I think we need to shut it down. I think it needs to be shut down until we can make sure that our, our nation is safe and the trafficking stops. If you cut off the money supply, you'll strangle the snake and it's yeah. time to cut the head off a snake. And I honestly know, I know that the cartel and the CCP have been working together for generations to bring in drugs. Fentanyl is not our biggest problem. General Flynn told me that child trafficking is the number one problem in the United States. And you are right. It's because they can use a child more than once. And that's sick. And those people, if they were caught red handed, I think they should be put to death. I don't think they deserve a trial. And people might think I'm callous. But to me, if you have zero empathy for injuring a child in such a horrific way, you're worse than a you're worse than a snake. I, I just have zero compassion for that. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, uh, in my opinion, anyway, as a veteran, I I see anybody that hurts children as an enemy combatant. Yes, I, I do too. Society as a whole, um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of discussions. My family, you know, we talked a lot about this and said, you know, well, you know, let's do the one thing that, you know, they can't do is show compassion. Let's just throw them on an island somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> far away from society, far away from everything. Just, yeah. Just kind of let them just say, hey, you guys have this island. It's yours. You can do whatever you want. We'll, with them, but we'll just put them in that. Chicago <laughs> 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 with your wall. <laughs> Sorry, Chicago, good people. Uh, <laughs> we'll get you out yeah. first. <laughs> uh, so one of the big questions that um, uh, Apologetic Patriot had uh, just wanted me to share with you, it says, uh, uh, would you work to remove the outrageous taxes on the businesses yeah. in California? Absolutely. If you want to think about it logically, our taxes are high because they keep giving our money to a corrupt regime in Ukraine and they're giving it to people crossing our border. So they give away our money. I don't know where they're getting it. They must be printing it and they give it away and then they raise our taxes just mm -hmm. like the school system. I do not believe the government should be involved in the school system. I think each district should have control of their own school system. So the parents have more control over the school board so that they can make the choices that need to be made over the curriculum that goes in those schools. And yeah. it's enough. I, I honestly believe that we have a bloated government that needs to be popped and it's time to restore the control back to the people and remind them that they have that control. And uh, uh, it just, it's frustrating, but I, I just really feel like we just need to take, take our country back. And I stand up for all of us. I, I don't stand up for any title at all. I don't want a title. I, I had this incident happen. Um, I was in Southern California. I had a long red dress on and um, this woman at our table couldn't get her shoes on. And there's other people at my table that are running for U.S. Senate and they're running for the same seat, actually. And I, I couldn't stand it. So I pushed my chair back, dropped my knees, put her swollen feet in my lap and she started crying and I had people from other tables saying, get off the floor, get off the floor. You're running for U.S. Senate. And I, it got quiet. And I said, that's exactly why I'm running. I don't care about that title and I don't care about that seat. Our humanity comes first. And this yeah. woman needs me. And I have no pride in getting on the floor. And I asked her if I could pray over her feet and her kidneys were failing. How dare they think that a dress and a title would mean more than my humanity. Shame on them. It, I, I just, I've gotten more phone calls from that one moment saying thank you, that it brought them to tears. And it's because everyone needs to start thinking about others and get over themselves. I am yeah. nothing. I'm just a mom 
that cares and I care enough to give my life and I'll do it in front of anybody any minute. You know, and that's exactly, I think what a lot of people want to see is somebody who can lead the way, yes. somebody that can get behind and follow yes. um, by those examples. So, all right. So the next question uh, they had was, is she a supporter of the WEF? Or has she ever received any payments, et cetera, from the WEF? What's the WEF? I don't remember what that um, is. World Economic Forum. Oh, heck no. Oh, my gosh. That needs to be destroyed. Are you kidding? Oh, golly, no. What a bunch of creeps. No. <laughs> my account would not be at $10,000 if that was the case. <laughs> First of all, let's just be practical. And no, the World, world Economic Forum... Uh, forum needs to be gone. Klaus Schwab should never be allowed to speak and his voice should never be allowed to be on any of our platforms ever. And yep. that goes for Yuval Noah Harari. What a bunch of psychopaths. They are for, they, they want zombies, honestly. They do not want people. They want servants. And it's a sad day in America that we have to look to movies to see if, where we're at. And I feel like we're in the Hunger Games. And they want to separate us in our district so they can have their little minions, so they can have their little world, so they can put us on parade and use us and not think about us. And I think that's why they're trying to uh, take away the body parts of our children in the school illegally. And um, they're trying to take away the right of our children to have life beyond themselves. And that's another one of my big, big issues and people think about it as of right now, but the teacher that's helping um, perpetrate these crimes against these children, which is not only abuse, I feel like it's it's well beyond that. I think it's it's um, it's the same. I think they deserve the death penalty too, but they'll never see that child again when they grow up and they're having psychological problems. But what people don't think about either is it takes out an entire generation. If that child cannot have life beyond themselves we're going to have a generation gone. That means that we'll have the young and we'll have the old, but they'll never be a middle class. And that's what they want. They want a malleable population that's too young and too dumb to think for themselves and be manipulated and groomed and brainwashed. And then they want the ones that are up there that have all the money. And by God, we have got to stop this evil that has come into our country and we have to think beyond the here and now. We have to think about what could happen in the future. And they want to take out generations of our nation so that we have no more um, generations in the middle. There won't be a, a middle class. They're, they want to take us out. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Um, you know, and I've done a lot of research on the WEF um, and, and a lot of its members, you know. Yeah. And all their policies that they have, uh, they've been trying to insinuate a 15, well, in instituting 15-minute cities. Oh, yeah. Now, we, we found that there is actually 26 U.S. cities right now currently have joined up, have volunteered yeah. uh, to make their cities into 15-minute cities. I have and a graph of L.A. County, too. Yeah, and, and I had a discussion with my... Uh, my fellow American who happens to be a black man, a very, very mm -hmm. intelligent guy. And uh, we were sitting down talking about this one day and he says, well, don't you see what it is? And I said, no, I, I, what am I missing? He says, man, he said, they did this back in the, you know, <clears throat> in the Southern yeah. States. He said, this is back in the 1800s. Yeah. He said, think about it. Those are called plantations. Yep. He said, you get your food, you get your clothing, you get all your necessities, everything that you ever need is going to be right there. So you're not going to, you're not going to own anything and you're going to be happy about it. And that is the mindset of plantations. It is. And I was, wow. If you just, that's the thing. That's the beauty about all of us having our different nationalities. People look at me and think I'm white. My grandmother was Cherokee Indian. And then I have a Polish Jew grandmother. I have, I have a lot of everything. So don't judge me by my color because you're going to be wrong. And okay. secondly, the 15 minute cities actually will, it's so much more advanced. If you're looking at the world, world economic forum standard, they even want to implant us and implant our brains so they can monitor us where we go. And if you go out that geo tracking field is what the, um, 
your cell phone or anything like that, any of your electronic devices, it can show where you are. And if you go out of your 15 minute city, you will get fined or you might not get to get food or you might not be able to get gas. And during COVID, we actually had an experience with this. Our daughter lived um, up in uh, above Sacramento and she came down to go to visit. She just drove straight here. She wasn't going to stop anywhere, but she got one of her kids was hungry. So they went through a drive through and her credit card would not work. So she called and they said, you're out of your area. You cannot use your card. So she had no money to buy food at Taco Bell because she was out of her area zone and it freaked her out. So we, we were five minutes away. We drove there and paid for the food, but that is, they're already trying it on us. They, mm -hmm. That's how they did the J6 people. They tracked their Bank of America credit cards and these places need to be taken out. The World Health Organization on top of the WEF should have no business in our state at all. The man in charge of that isn't even a doctor. He's appointed. And yeah. I we could go on to a lot of other things that I think need to be ripped out by their root. And I do not believe Bill Gates should be in the United States, George Soros. I believe everybody that's Chinese Communist Party that's bought farmland that has no intention at all of using as farmland need to be removed from the United States of America. And I believe every one of those people at the border that are coming across that are obviously Chinese communist people and anybody that's colluding with them, they need to be uh, tried for treason. And uh, I just believe in the death penalty. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, we know that the Chinese communist party is working with the world economic. Yes. Absolutely. And they've been a constant threat to American, American sovereignty mm -hmm. for one. They've been funding a lot of programs. They've been funding a lot of individuals yep. uh, to subvert our constitution. So they just um, bought all of the um, medical records from CVS Pharmacy and Rite Aid. China did. Why do they need to know what our prescriptions are? That's yeah. the part that is scary. And that's when you're going to have to start having some faith in God and why we have to have our own pharmaceuticals in our own country and China mails us our medications. So many people don't realize that we get most of everything from other countries that do not like us or do not have our standards of mm -hmm. taking care of things. And some there were some eye drops actually recently that were causing people to go blind. And mm -hmm. it's, it's like all of the standards have went out the window when um, they locked us down. And I'm telling you right now, you stand up, you do not comply, do not let them lock us down. That is so unconstitutional. And that was a test run. And I really think that they're going to try something greater than that. And I'm just asking everybody vote so much, not more than once, just one per person, but encourage people to vote and make it so they cannot vote enough to cheat, that they run out of paper, that they can't print it. Because we are watching, and I don't think that um, Elon's uh, satellites are up there for nothing. I believe that we have eyes on a lot of things, and I believe there's going to be a lot of geo-tracking. You watch. You watch what's going on, and you call the sheriff. You call the police. Don't leave. If you get a mail-in ballot, you take it in. Find out if anybody's voted for you. If they have, you, yeah. you hang on to that mail-in ballot. Do not surrender it, because the person that voted first gets to keep that vote. And who knows who that was? It could be somebody from Nicaragua that just signed their name so they could have a signature so they could run it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, 20, everybody knows 2020 election was stolen. Yes. Uh, you know, from, from all walks of life, everybody. I mean, there's been so much co uh, uh, coverage about that. Um, so what are your thoughts about the central banking system? Uh, the central banking system, the Federal Reserve is not ours. If you didn't know that, I'm telling you right now, it's always been privately owned. It became privately owned when the Titanic sank. There's so many things that people need to wake up to and look back in history. They try to make us so busy that you that your memory, you have a short memory span. So everything's just like fast food, fast this, fast everything. You need to start learning your history. The Federal Reserve um, is owned by the um, Rockefellers, and they have no, 
the gold standard needs to be returned to our country. The gold standard is so that there was supposed to be equal amounts of gold and silver to the dollars that were printed. I can guarantee you that that is not what's in there. And the reason I say that when they start putting signs up on drive throughs that they don't have change, there's a problem and they have outprinted themselves. And so this, this corrupt, um, regime and in, in the white house and i don't even call it white anymore uh they've it's just disgusting what they've done there but they have made an open border because they're panicked on how to get their money back and the reason i say that with uh, with knowledge is because when my son was in iraq the the wars the endless wars weren't because we needed to be in that war i honestly believe with 100% um, um, just, just knowledge in my heart uh, that they used it to launder money back to themselves. And when we had to pay, this is just a basic, th there's so much more. When we had to pay to replace cows in Iraq because insurgents were hiding behind that cow to take out our Marines, there's a problem. Yeah. Why did we have to pay for a cow that was being used as a shield, which isn't a very good shield, but to kill our Marines? Why would we do that in God's name? And I say that that money got sent and got relaundered and put back into somebody's grandkids account. And I do not believe that's not true, because if you look at a lot of the politicians, they sure became stinking rich on a on a servant's payroll. And it just. There's just too many things that don't add up. I believe so many audits need to be done. They need to be done to the trained and nowhere that's here in California. They need to be done about why our state is $141 billion in debt. And our federal government should be ashamed of themselves for kicking the can down the road and keep raising the debt ceiling. And then they fight over funding a wall that President Trump wanted, but yet they have no problem giving it to illegals crossing the border over the American citizens and then okay. mailing it to Ukraine. He goes and buys a couple of yachts. No, there is a huge problem going on and our borders need to be shut down and we need to get this straight and we need to clean it up and put the American people first and remind them of why they live in the best nation in the entire world. They don't remember why the youth right now. I met with these young boys at this um, in and out and I love in and out by the way. Good, good place. Great hamburgers. Um, they wanted to know what my thoughts were on about Second Amendment. And I told them the truth. And they asked if they could take a picture with me. They were teenagers or else I'd post it. But I don't post minors pictures without their parents' permission. But they were young men that really wanted to know. And they want to know what's going to happen to their country. And I told them, I want to know exactly what they think. I, I gave them my email address. I said, I want to know what the most important things are to you boys, because you are my future. You're the future of my grandkids and I need to stand up for you. And I do care what you think. And I did not know they were a debate team. <laughs> I just overheard them talking about war. And I just said, do you think we're going to war? And they said, under this current administration, they said anything could happen because they don't care about us. Yeah. And for a young 16 year old boy, there was, there was about 10 of them different nationalities, Indian, Chinese, um, just every nationality, Asian, um, which Chinese is Asian too, but they were just uh, different nationalities. They are scared for the future. That means us parents and grandparents need to stand up and fight for these young men. And they need to know they're not going to get sent to a fake war in Ukraine. Yeah, there might be a war and people might get pissed off about me saying that, but you can't keep sending um weapons and things to a place that is never going to win. They're not going to win. And NATO is corrupt. I do not believe we should be in NATO. They don't, they don't pay their part and we shouldn't have to pay our part to, to countries that have obviously been involved in um, fraudulent elections. They did trace those different things to countries that were supposed to be our allies and they need to be held to account too. As a U.S. senator, people don't realize they'll hear a lot of speeches from the 30 candidates. Everything they talk about is everything they can't do. It's everything a governor should have done. A U.S. senator writes bills. They fight for our nation as well as our state. 
and they can redirect funds. They can, um, it's not indict a president. I always forget what that word is. They can press charges against other uh, um, congressmen and senators and um, a president, as well as um, be ambassadors for our nation. That means going to other nations and be ambassadors, just like happened in Benghazi. There was a um, an ambassador there that I believe um, Hillary took out. And oh, I know that there's documents on that. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, it, it's just so sickening, the things that I've seen. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to have common sense. But yeah. as a mother, I've paid close attention. And the reason I have is I have an obligation to protect the ones that have been given to me by God. And they are my first and foremost. But having a daycare, I my love for children's um, just it's unlimited like it is for our vets. And I, I respect what you have done for our country. And I respect what you deal with every day. People don't know what you feel like when you lay down at night and you're by yourself and thoughts go through your head that you try to struggle with. And my heart has so much compassion. I know my son brought home a Marine that ended up becoming a raging alcoholic. And he gave me permission to read a a prayer that he prayed over me when I said I was going to run, but he would write the most beautiful poems and they would be laying all over my house when it, wherever I would find him to cover them up in the night. And I picked those pieces of paper up or napkins or whatever he found to write on. And I saved them in a manila envelope. And when I told him I was going to run, I told him that he lives in North Carolina. I said, your ma's going to run for us Senate. And before I, before I tell you anymore, I want to let you know that you left parts of yourself in California. And I've seen, I have seen that you've become strong enough to handle reading what you wrote from your heart when you were drunk in my house. And I want to send these parts of you back because they would be an amazing book for people to understand what a vet goes through and what yeah. happens to their heart and to their soul. And, um, I'll share that um, poem with you um, on your phone. Um, I don't have it out right now, but you know, my heart is so um, compassionate. I, I don't think I have a mean bone in my body, but people have asked me on this campaign, how can you have integrity and be for the death sentence? God is a God of justice. Yeah. And there is a difference between right and wrong. And I have 100% integrity when I say that anyone who hurts a child needs to be put to death because that's, my integrity that's is the only dead. mean bone that you have is just not, not, not that issue. Uh, just like a lot of us, you know, Yeah. you know, we were, we were trained to go and to fight in wars, to, to know how to kill people. Um, but the, what a lot of us vets, you know, we're all come to the same conclusion is that, We've been lied to. Now, if they would have told us, they came out and said, hey, uh, this is the reason why we're going to Iraq. This is the reason why we're going to Afghanistan. I guarantee you, uh, the vast majority of us would have never signed up. We would have, yeah. we would have, we would have uh, uh, disobeyed our direct orders. We would have said, no, nope, I'm not going. I, I'm not going to go over there for, you know, for this whole power and control over the oil and manipulation yes. of the yes. currency systems. The real uh, story. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> but, you know, we want what we, I guess a lot of veterans, uh, we don't want the future generations to go through the same mistakes that we did yeah. because we know what it's like having to trying to reintegrate back into the system mm -hmm. with no help. And yes. a lot of us end up turning to alcohol or drugs. Or suicide, um, 10 a day. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've lost a lot of... A lot of brothers, yeah, 22 a day. Um, I myself almost became part of that statistic. Um, but um, my experience on that was that you know, Jesus himself came to me, uh, actually spoke to me just like I can That's hear beautiful. you. Beautiful, yes, he does. Told that. Me that, you know, he had a plan and a purpose for my life, too. You know, yes. so I trusted that voice, you know, I trust that voice over. The, this other voice that, been, that drowns me out all the time. So yeah. uh, it's, it's been a journey. It's been a, a tough journey, but I think, uh, you know, a lot of us, we just want to, if we're going to send our youth into war, we want it to be for a right reason. Yeah. Not, 
Sorry. Not, yeah, not for the people. You know, getting I want to encourage all of you vets um, that are listening. When God created you in heaven, he held you in his hand before he wrote you down in his journal and your name. He called your name and he sent you on a mission. And that mission is not completed. That voice that you hear that says that you need to just end it is not from God because he loves you so much. I want you to start saying no fear. And I want you to start saying, God, I want to complete my assignment. You can, you, you formed me for, and you are that little spark of God that he created you in his likeness. And that's the reason why you have so many things come against you in your mind. And you want, you think that ending it will make it better. It won't. That's the enemy. You need to realize you have an enemy trying to attack your mind and, and you need to say, get back. I have no fear. I have an assignment and I'm going to complete it because God created me for a special reason. And I just want you to stand up and remember that you were created for a special reason that only you can complete. And that is saving those around you. The ones that God has brought into your life that only can hear your voice because the way you talk and the way that you um, articulate yourself can only speak to certain people. And that's why God created you. So I want you to have hope and know that you are so loved and I'm fighting for you. I'm not just fighting for the babies. I'm fighting for our vets that need hope because you guys have been wronged and I'm going to restore honor where honors do. And you will, you will walk with your head how high and know that you meant something and the sacrifices that you made and the things that you deal with every day mean something and that you're not by yourself and you'll have somebody to talk to that says, I love you. Let me hug you until all those pieces get put back together. It's going to happen. And I'm so thankful that you heard God's voice and that he's, that he came to you. And I know that God could do that with all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, um, you know, as myself, as a, a follower of Jesus, you know, um, I wake up every morning and I say my morning prayers. You know, I I take the time to, you know, learn to love myself as Jesus yes. loves me. Yes. Um, and then I start about the day. Um, I got into a discipline in doing that because I understood the assignment was um, I need to have that relationship with Jesus now more than ever. Yes. Um, every single day. So, so, you know, for the viewers out there, you know, um, if those who are actually trying to, um, have a relationship with Jesus or they want to have a relationship with Jesus, um, what is the best way for them to do this? You know, I, I really encourage you to reach out to your fellow, um, your fellow vets and, you're more than welcome to email me. I might not be able to get back to you right right away because of the campaign. Um, March 5th is the primaries in California. But I, I will email you back. I'll be your pen pal. You can call me. I um, I have a big heart. And I I take on lots of, lots of family members. I adopt them all over. And even if they don't want me, I'm like, nope, I'm part of your life. <laughs> so I will, I will encourage you. And... You know, you, when you lay down at night, I think this is the biggest factor and you're alone and you have that moment to think what, what's my purpose? God hears you. He's never left you. And you just need to say, God, just become real to me. Show me a sign. He, he will take on challenges. He will leave a feather on your bed to let you know that angels were guarding over you. He will. There, there's just so many miraculous things. Say a word. Say, God, I want to hear this word tomorrow. I want somebody just to say this word. Just challenge him. Challenge him. Look at the cloud and say, God, I, I'm going to look at that cloud and I want you to make it disappear. And stare at it and I, it'll go. Just keep staring. I mean, it doesn't take very long. The power that you have in you as a child of God is so much greater than you think. And all you have to do is ask. It's so simple. Just ask. And... um and join, just be together. I mean, don't take this on alone. If you need to talk to somebody, even our church, we we have more military here, Navy, Naval SEAL, Navy SEALs. And I mean, Doc Pete Chambers is one of the people that signed for me. And um, Joe Vega, the one from Black Hawk Down, he's an amazing man. Um, I just, I love our vets and the things that they've went through. And 
you can talk to us, call our church, Church of Glad Tidings um, in Yuba City, California, or Live Oak, it might pop up. We have, we have a hotline. We will talk to you. It doesn't matter what time of day. If you need somebody to cry to, no one will ever know your information, but you'll have somebody that has compassion and that can pray. I love that. Love that. So one last question for you before we uh, kind of jump off of here for the day. I know you, you got, you're pretty busy. So um, what is your feelings about how, um, okay, I guess the question is, does she believe in American believe American patriots are terrorists that are also the number one threat to America. But what do you feel like is the number one threat to America? The number one threat to America right now is, is our uh, three letter agencies and the Chinese communist party uh, The the three letter agencies, as well as our three branches of government have been weaponized against the American people or else the FBI and all of them would be fighting about what's going on at the border. They know how many terrorists have crossed our border and done nothing. So to me, they've been weaponized and the Patriots are us, uh, with the American people that are being abused, the ones that are being called terrorists that go to a school board meeting to stand up for their kid that had to put a mask on their face out of the trash can. Those are, those are the Patriots, not, not the IRS not the FBI, not the CIA, none of them, the DOD, what right do they have to try to beat us into the ground and call us things that we are not? We are not terrorists. We are God-fearing, loving patriots that love our nation and stand on the fact that we have a constitution that they are violating and they need to be held to account. And um, I mean, I live in a town of 1800 people and they tapped our phones. They've had government cars outside of my home, taking pictures of anybody that parks in front of it. And so that tells me that I'm not a threat, but the name of Jesus is. And that just makes me laugh. So if they want to take a picture of me. I'm happy to go take a picture of them. And they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like taking your picture. And they're like, well, you don't have a right to take my picture. And I said, well, I didn't ask you, this is my property. <laughs> <laughs> so sucker so yeah um i here i know there's been a lot of questions on here um a lot Is of this live <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> wiping my nose like, stop making me cry <laughs> yeah definitely you know one of the big issues that i i i talk a lot about this with my family, my friends, and my business associates and things. I said, you know what? Listen, I said, this all started back and, you know, we go back to, you know, the early 1900s and yes. all that stuff. Yes. But in the 1950s, that's when they started removing yep. God's word from the school from systems. Yep. And they eventually, you know, families stopped sitting at the dinner table together yeah and we've had weaponized uh like you said the three letter agencies that are weaponized mm -hmm. so the first thing they did was they'd get the man out of the house the alpha male that is yep. the protector the, the leader yep. and then now they then then told the women hey you, you could you don't uh, you don't need a man to be strong you know you could be independent and be strong and then all these falsehoods and they uh government says i'll be your baby daddy you know you just sign yeah. up with me you can have as many different fathers of your children if you want, and we'll just keep paying you. What they didn't realize was that, you know, this was a, a plantation, a slavery, a set of slavery mm -hmm. mindset. Yeah. And so many people are, are, are stuck in the system because the system is really, it's not for us. It's, it's been rigged against us. It since, really has. Yes. You know, since they removed God out of the equation. And I think, yes. uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, not only as a veteran, but as a, a husband and a father, I believe that the answer has always, always lies in our relationship with Christ mm -hmm. and us having a family, local based solutions yes. rather than going to the government for solutions. Yes. Uh, because government doesn't provide solutions. They, they'll, they'll, they'll provide the problem and then they'll yeah. provide a way to hook you into to being codependent. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So you need to be aware that the candidates 
people that are going to hear the candidates here in California, a lot of, a couple of them actually are using my own words, but they'll fall flat because if you don't have the spirit of the Lord in you and, and really believe that the Bible's real and you don't call it the Bible, like, which is the living word of God. I don't call it the Judeo Christian Bible. Oh my gosh. I've had that said to me. So you need to know that you'll feel it in your heart if it's true. And many things that they're going to say are things that they created. They created the problem of the taxes. The taxes need to be lifted. Lifted, and what they do during an election is they're going to drop some of their stocks and make the um, interest rates drop a little bit, and they're going to lower the gas prices so you feel a little bit of relief, thinking, "Oh, it's not so bad." No, it's horrible. That two cents doesn't make a darn bit of sense when you're broke, and when you're having to use your credit card to buy gas. And the things that they're doing, all the things, the debates that I'm not allowed on because I don't have enough money in my account to be qualified, uh, which is ridiculous. I'm an American citizen. We all should be heard. And uh, the fact that they are trying to blame the federal government in Washington, D.C. for California being broke is a flat out joke. The train to nowhere should have been audited many, many times over. And they released more than 80% of our water into the ocean. There should have been a base and there should be storage sheds for our water. But the infrastructure of our dams are my biggest concern right now. Just because of a terrorist aspect, I have to think logically. And logically, that would be the first strike that they would take to, just to um, cripple California. Because if our farmlands can't grow, then we don't have food and we're dependent on the government, which is what they want. And yeah. that's something that I feel in my heart. I don't think God's laid it on my heart for nothing. I've, I've shared that with General Flynn. Um, I, I listen to what the Lord shares with me. And I think that's very, very important. These people that have been brought into our nation, the Chinese Communist Party, they've come from this, the North and the South through Montana and um, through Canada. And I don't think the property that they've bought, the farmland has been utilized for farms because they're utilizing it for supplies and to house people that are trying to build up a strike against us from within and the enemy is within. And if you don't know that I'm not trying to cause fear in you, I want you to have your head on a swivel, be prepared, have water because when they do shut the power off, which is what I think they'll do to try to stop an election because they know they're losing. Um, you just need to be prepared for your family and have water and some food and um, know your neighbors. Um, we're there to help our neighbors. Um, and you need to have your tribe. You need to know where they're at. You need to know where you'd meet up if anything happened. And when I have a corrupt governor tell us that we're not allowed to carry our CCW um, carry permits into a crowd, my first thought as a daycare provider that listens to children, you read between the lines. That child, that man child that's supposed to be the governor is saying something's going to happen to crowd and he doesn't want anybody to have their gun. Yeah. And to me, that's the first reason why we should have our CCW. And by law, you cannot tell me my Second Amendment right is not um, viable to carry openly. And so they can say what they want. They can call us names. They can say that we're terrorists. No. We're American citizens that know what our rights are. And I stand on those as God is my witness. And he is the savior. And he is the, the only one that can help us with this. So I ask you to pray. I ask you to go to my website, see what I'm about, because I love you. And it's not about titles. We are fighting a battle against evil. And the only way that we're going to overcome it is with prayer and voting. And the church needs to wake up. And um, parents, just stand up. No fear. 365 times in the Bible. Say it more than once if you have to. Choose faith. Exactly. Exactly. You know. So, uh, I, do you have any last um, message that you want to share with the audience uh, um, before we leave for today? Yeah. Just, just remember how important you are and this is not the last stand. I really believe that things are going to change for the better. It's going to get ugly. My grandma used to say, you have to make a mess to clean up your cupboard. And it's true. We're going to have to make a mess before we can make it organized. And it's, it's going to be uncomfortable, 
but you're going to have to suck it up because the only way we're going to get through this is together. And I ask you to go to my website, www.charletabassett.com. And that's S-H-A-R-L-E-T-A -E Bassett, B-A-S-S-E-T-T. And just so you know, I have never got funds from the World Economic Forum, those creeps. And they need to be removed from our, um, from all of our social media. They shouldn't even be allowed to stream into our country as, as all the who also. But we just ask if anybody can donate $1. We don't ask for more than that. And that might sound silly to you, but to me, it's a, it's, it's a fact. Everybody's having a hard time, but $1 times whoever hears my voice, it goes a long way. And we need that. You don't need millions to run a campaign. You need, you need faith in God. You need faith in your country and the love of our nation. And yes, I am voting for president Trump. I have endorsed president Trump and I'm praying that he endorses me because that man has taken more arrows for us than anybody I've ever seen. And only by the grace of God, is he still standing? You pray for his family. And yeah. I ask for covering. I pray covering for all of you. And if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to pray for everyone that's listening. And even if you're not a Christian, I still want to pray that, that you have um, courage. So if you, if you would let me do that, I would love to do that. That's fine. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this um, amazing man that is using his voice to reach the people that need to hear it, Lord. We know that you created him for a special purpose as you did everyone else that's listening. I stand on your word, Lord, that you are the, the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord, and that you created us for a purpose. I ask you to bring hope and faith and courage to every single person listening to know that we are the ones that make the choices and we need to stand up together as one shield, one body, one um, wall of strength against the multitude of people that are fighting against us. And they want us to think that we are the minority, but we aren't. We are the majority and we outnumber them. We can do this together. Lord, I just thank you for your mercy. I ask you to meet these people that are listening in that private place, even if it's when they lay down at night and it's the only time they hear quiet, come to their minds, bring them peace and bring them hope. And I want them to feel the love of our Savior that died for their sins. I thank you for everyone listening. I ask you to bless them, Father. And we say this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Charletta, uh, for joining us today and um, sharing uh, a little bit about yourself and what your policies are, and most importantly, all your heart. Uh, this mm -hmm. is an issue that um, we, we're all having in this world is a heart issue. And, yes. You know, um, you know, we, we can't do this alone. We can't do this by mm -hmm. ourselves. And I think you are uh, more than qualified. Uh, to be the one that's going to be in the position that should be leading uh, the state of California, uh, the U.S. Senate, and the rest of the United States as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, so for the viewers out there to get a chance, go to her website, yeah. uh, vote for her in the primaries if you're in her area. The and whole state can vote for me. <laughs> there you it's go. True. The whole state of California can vote for me. So get out there, tell your friends about it, share this video, um, you know, get the information out there and let's, let's see if we can get her in the office so um, we can start being part of the change that we want to see. Yes, yes, so. together. Thank you guys for watching today. This has been an amazing episode. Um, we are... Um, we're going to continue to support uh, a lot of these candidates out there in every way that we can um, that want to change the way things are being done today. Uh, we need to bring it back about uh, the education of the Constitution and much more. So to get a chance to, you know, go ahead and follow us on patreon.com backslash uh, Paladin Roundtable Network uh, for all of our updated and new videos that we will have up there. Um, there are 10 channels on this uh, particular network here. Um, so give each and every one of us, uh, you know, um, a view, uh, share, 
Uh, let's get this message out there to all the others. Uh, we are just independent creators, veterans, uh, veteran advocates. Uh, we, we're just trying to make a, fun, a big change in the world. We're not looking for notoriety. Uh, we're not looking to get rich and famous. We're just everyday people. Um, just like the John, I, I'm just the John Wayne of this uh, podcast uh, world. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. God bless you. God bless America. And let's do this together.